So Apple did it. Apple released iPadOS 16.2 Beta 2 and iOS 16.2 Beta 2 to all developers to try out, to test out, and see if there's any A, any tangible differences, B, any bug improvements, and finally for me, I kind of want to see how Stage Manager is doing because because even though it was brought back to 16.2 Beta 1, there's still a few more bugs that really need to get ironed out and kinked out, but outside of that, it's looking good. But without further ado, let's talk about everything new with these new beta updates. Let's get into it. Okay everyone, so let's get right into this video. And like I mentioned, we're gonna be talking about both iOS 16.2 Beta 2 and iPadOS 16.2 Beta 2. And the first thing I'd like to do is actually see the build size and the build number. So from a build size perspective on iPadOS, it's about 607.9 megabytes. So give yourself at least a gig, maybe a little bit more to get it installed, get it installed correctly. And I'm also rocking the M2 iPad Pro 12.9 version. And then this is actually a screenshot of beta 2 for iOS and I'm rocking as you can see the iPhone 13 Pro Max and we have 566.8 megabytes. Now normally with these size numbers in terms of megabytes there won't be too many tangible difference and as I go along you guys will notice that there isn't too much to write home about when it comes to a new feature set standpoint. But that's what we're dealing with from a build size. So give yourself at least one gig on each of these devices to get this installed and get it installed correctly. Now the next thing I like to do is actually check out the build number because it's a great indicator to let us know how far away we are from actually getting this ready to go to the entire public. So you can see that with iPadOS, we are on 20C5043 lowercase e. And if I grab my iPhone and I go into the general, go into the about, you can see that the iPhone is in the same version. So 20C5043 lowercase e. And with that lowercase e means we're getting closer and closer to probably a December release to the entire public. And the closer and closer we get to lowercase b, lowercase a, and then finally getting rid of it, we'll get the RC edition, and then finally the final release to everybody. And with the 16.2 update, the main features that we did get are things like the new application Freeform, which is both on iOS, iPadOS, and macOS beta, if you guys are doing macOS beta. And then also what was brought back on the iPad was extended monitor support, which we'll touch on in a second. But from a what's new standpoint, we only noticed three things. So the first two things is actually in widgets. So it has nothing to do with the iPad, but if we go into our iPhone, Let's lock this thing and go into our actual home screen. We're gonna to go to customize, go into the lock screen, go into the widgets, and if we scroll down, you can see that we actually have two new widgets. The first one is under health, which is a new medication widget, which is always good to see. So if you're somebody that takes any sort of medication that's on a time basis, or you need a daily reminder, or even if it's a multivitamin that you put into your Apple Health app, you can just use this to get reminders and it'll be prevalent on your lock screen. So if I click on this, no, no medications are scheduled today. And then also you have the smaller widget size, which again, is just an indicator like, hey, you should probably have your medication because it's time. And the second new widget that we got was actually in the sleep. We now have some new widgets for sleep tracking. So if I get rid of these, I can add this one in here, which lets you know a graph or a line graph of exactly how long you were in bed for, how much proper sleep you got, and whether or not you got enough sleep from that last day. And then also you have the smaller one, which lets you know a quick glance. You had six hours and 37 minutes of in bed time. Versus this one, it tells you that same information, but a little bit more in terms of some granularity when it comes to when you were awake versus when you were asleep. Now this next feature I'm gonna talk about isn't really out quite yet, but there's this new custom accessibility mode which is gonna be releasing for iOS and macOS and iOS 16.2. So it's codenamed Clarity. The new mode basically replaces Springboard. And what Springboard is, is basically how the home screen is structured on any iOS and iPadOS device. So it's the main iOS interface with the more streamlined ones. This feature, which is still unavailable to users in the current beta, will be available at an accessibility option aimed to making the iPhone and iPad interface more user-friendly for those users who may find it too complicated. So it's this new mode that lets you make your iPhone even easier to use and makes it more customizable for your use cases. So Apple internally describes custom accessibility mode as a customizable streamlined way to use your iPhone and iPad. In some ways, a new mode should work similarly with to the current guided access mode. And if you don't know what guided access is, is if I go into any single application and I triple click on my lock button, we have guided access. And what guided access does is it locks you into this certain application. This is a great tool for if you have a child and you wanna give your child your phone to distract them with, which I do on a daily basis, but you don't want them to leave any application or you don't want them to send a message or lock your phone, you just lock them into this application. And that's what the current version of guided access is, which I use a lot. So this lets users lock the device to a single application. However, with custom accessibility modes, it will let users navigate through the system with some restrictions. So for example, users will be able to set things like UI and larger text 
apps available on the home screen, allow contacts. So I don't know, maybe it's something that we've always wanted, which is something like being able to have a certain file as an app icon, which is something that we were never allowed to do before. So it does seem like an interesting update when it comes to a custom accessibility mode called Clarity, which should be coming hopefully when the 16.2 release does actually happen. We'll probably get it in a beta three or a beta four release and you guys will be the first to know exactly what it does and how it works. And let's quickly see Freeform and see if there's any new additions to Freeform or any new stability updates. As you guys can see, this is the Freeform that I was using before, works with your Apple Pencil. And if I go over here, we can pull up that same Freeform right here. We're gonna open that board, give it two seconds, I zoom in and out and you can see that we have the same exact board on my iPhone that we do on the iPad. But overall Freeform is extremely stable. I've played with it a decent amount. As you can see, it moves around nicely. I can zoom in and out. I can grab things, move them around, make them larger. Grab this check mark. I can pinch to zoom into it, then also make it bigger. I can trash it if I don't need it anymore. So these are all things that work extremely well. So Freeform, honestly, is one of the most stable applications and I'm excited for you guys to try it out when you do get the chance to. And the last thing I do want to show off is extended monitor support with 16.2 beta 2 because we did get it back with the original beta 1 version. So let's plug this in and see exactly how quick or slow this is happening in real time. Now, according to the release notes, there's nothing new when it comes to stage manager or extended monitor support, but I did want to give you guys a little bit of a demo of what it looks like and how quickly it opens up, how quickly it renders open. We're using a 4K monitor. You can see that it took a little bit of time there for, to really get going, but overall it does open up. And from a stability standpoint, from my use case, it's been extremely stable, more so than it was when it originally released with the extended monitor support with 16.0 betas. If we just use it casually, we can just open up Twitter. We can pull down to get the dock again. Let's open up Safari over here. That also opens up very easily. I can resize these. I can resize these windows. And you can see right here that these are actually the release notes from 16.2. So Freeform just has a couple known issues. Keyboard has been resolved. So when using the Chinese keyboard, Stage Manager, which has a couple known issues, the TV app, SwiftUI. But as you guys can see, there's no new features aside from something with SwiftUI, which won't apply to us today. But if we grab, let's say something like the App Store, we'll move this up, but you can see how responsive everything is, right? Let's open up YouTube, put this over here. Let's open up a fifth application. So something like, let's say LumaFusion, and it pushes everything to the shelf and I can just start grabbing stuff, moving it into here. And I don't know, I just love Stage Manager, extended monitor support. It's how I edit all my videos now with the iPad, combined with the M2 processor, absolutely love it. And now the last thing I do wanna test out or look at is actual battery life. So if we get out of here, go into my settings, and this is gonna be a great illustration of what the M2 battery life is like. But if I go into battery life on both devices, you can see that over the last 10 days, I'm doing about seven hours and 45 minutes of screen on time, almost three and a half hours of screen off time. And again, I am using an iPhone 13 Pro Max which has been an absolute battery champ. And from a battery health perspective, I'm at 93% battery and I'm still getting these eight hour days, no problem whatsoever. And I've only crossed 100% charge one day, which is on this Wednesday. And that Wednesday I got seven hours and 32 minutes. On this day right here, we got about eight hours and seven minutes and another eight hours of screen off time. A day like this, we almost got nine hours of screen on time with less than 100%. So battery life on the iPhone is still a champ, especially the Pro Max versions. And if you go on the last 10 days here, and we've had this iPad for two weeks now. So if we go on a day like this, we had five hours and 40 minutes of screen on time, and we did cross 100% by a little bit. On another day like this, we had seven hours and 22 minutes of screen on time, but we barely touched 75%. So battery life on the M2 is a little bit more optimized, which I would hope so because it is a brand new device with brand new battery. But again, it's still gonna be the same story, which is task intensive applications will take up the most amount of storage. But that is all we have from a what's new perspective and a battery perspective. Let's finish up this video. But that is pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, there weren't too many tangible differences. There were a couple of new ones. And then we also, like I said, got Freeform and Stage Manager with the original beta one release or the re-release of Stage Manager and extended monitor support for M1 and M2 enabled iPads, which is a welcome addition. I just wish Apple brought the extended monitor support to a lot more iPad Pros like they did with Stage Manager. And obviously Freeform is one of my favorite applications that's going kind of under the radar. And I'm definitely gonna do a follow-up video as a starter guide of how to use Freeform. So definitely stay subscribed to that because Freeform is a very, very powerful tool. And I will link below my original video on Freeform, which is definitely worth the watch. But that's gonna do it, everybody. If you did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end of the video. And if you guys wanna watch some more iOS, iPadOS, or macOS videos, click on one of these right here because we got a lot coming down the pipeline, especially a bunch of Black Friday accessory deals. So definitely stay tuned. But that's gonna do it. I'm Fernando. Definitely subscribe because we're trying to get to 800,000 subscribers before the end of the year. And until next time, I'm out of here. Peace. Thank you.